Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my review of the One Plus One. Now this isn't gonna be your typical sort of review. I'm not gonna run through the specs of the phone. You can find those online. I'm not going to give you these sort of candy shots of the phone either, these crisp close-ups, because what good's that? You've seen what the phone looks like in my unboxing and first look. What I wanna to talk to you about here is just my real world actual day-to-day -day experience with the OnePlus One and what I like and what I don't like. Now, a lot of people so far have been making videos where they have been reporting mixed reactions to the phone. Some have been saying the battery life is fantastic. Some have been saying it's very, very poor. For me, the actual performance of the battery has been mediocre, it's been acceptable. When I did my weekend long test of this, where I was actually testing the camera only, the battery was pretty abysmal. It didn't even last through a whole day, but that was very, very heavy use on recording video. So that was sort of expected. When I was using this day to day, just regular use, you know, a bit of web surfing, checking emails, taking the occasional photo, taking the occasional video, using Instagram, etc then it's performed absolutely fine. You know, it's been very, very good. Easily lasts a whole day on a single charge. Now, I wanna cover off some of the things I really dislike about the OnePlus One. And there aren't many, but uh, I think they should be addressed. Now, the first one is when I'm using it to capture video, either 1080p or 4K, which are the two main modes I've used it in. There are other modes available as well, such as a really high frame rate mode. I have found that it gets extremely hot. Now, across this back area here, obviously near the camera sensor, it's just so, so hot to touch that that shouldn't be like that when you're using a smartphone. This is a consumer device. This is something that shouldn't be needed to be handled with great care, but it got too hot that I wouldn't have even handed it to somebody to actually hold after recording some video on this because it would have certainly been cause for concern. The other thing that I really didn't like, and you'll have seen this if you watched my weekend video, which I recorded in 4K with the OnePlus One, I'll leave a link to that in the video description, was that the very introduction to that video was out of focus. Now, I am predicting that a lot of people will say, well, why did you publish that video? It's out of focus. Well, I'm not here to make this product look good. I'm here to show you what it does and what it doesn't do well. And when you're recording video, there are a couple of main factors. Now, if you imagine this is on my extending arm, this is what I use to record videos with a smartphone. So this is held at arm's length with the phone mounted onto the arm. Now, when it's at arm's length, and you're gonna have it this way round. Let me just put the camera on to give you a quick demonstration. So here's the camera actually on, and I'm gonna start video recording. So there we go, we started video recording, but it's actually pre-focused. It's focused on whatever the phone was actually pointing at, or whatever the camera's pointing at when I started that video. So now it's at arm's length, and it's recording me. So the only way I can get it to refocus is to reach round and tap on the screen somewhere and hope that it's refocused on what I'm taking the video of. Or I have to not start recording until it's focused and then reach around and try and hit the record button. That is hardly ideal. And I was sort of experimenting with various ways of doing this whilst I was recording my weekend video. And for, for the most part, things were in focus, but the very first section, I thought, no, I'm gonna use it how a normal person would use it, and a normal person would do this. So demonstration again, a normal person would hit record, and then they would turn the camera around or the smartphone around and they'd start recording. Well, hey, that was focused on my hand or my arm, so the rest of the video is gonna be out of focus. And I wanted to make that point in my weekend video. It's not ideal if you're taking videos of yourself, unless you're gonna switch around and use that front-facing camera, which doesn't shoot in either 1080p, I don't even think it does 1080p, I think it's 720p from the front-facing camera. Now, moving on to the second issue with the video capture. Now, when you are actually recording 
in sort of a good lit room like this. This is my studio. I've got an overhead light and I've got some natural light and I've got a couple of studio lights on. It's absolutely fine. Very, very nice quality photos and video, very detailed as well. And the 4K video absolutely shines. It is awesome in every respect. But when you are recording in dimly lit conditions, there is a lot of noise. And that's not just this smartphone, that's not just the OnePlus One, but it is pretty much every smartphone with the exception of a couple. But that's not for this video, that's for another video. So camera performance, very, very good if you treat it well and you set up your shots correctly. Now again, I'm gonna cite some videos that I've seen on YouTube where it shows this camera as being amazing. I can make it look amazing. If I put this into my studio environment, I can show you this capturing awesome 4K video, but that's not real world case scenario use. That is me setting up a professional video shoot to showcase this camera. So bear that in mind, it performs acceptable, but not fantastically. Now, one of the other things I really didn't like, and that is that these capacitive sort of area buttons off screen, so you can set the buttons to be on screen or off screen. When they're off screen, the backlight is so dim that you can hardly see it. Unless you're in a very dark room, the backlight is just too weak on these off screen sort of capacitive buttons at the bottom here. So, what else do I really like? Well, there are some features in here that not everyone would use. There is an on-screen recording feature or a screencast feature where you can actually start recording the screen. In fact, I'm gonna start one now. And when you're recording the screen, it actually captures that to a video file. Again, I'll show you what I'm capturing uh, live. So unedited, you're gonna see on the screen, just sort of over here, what I am seeing on my screen now. And it's a really nice user interface. Now, this is a Cyanogen Mod 11, so it's over the top of Android 4.4 KitKat. And it's got some really nice touches to it, some nice animations. You'll see in what apps come pre-installed, plus a few that I've installed as well. And everything works at a nice speed, very, very good turn of speed. The actual widget for the weather and the time, I really do love. And one of the things I really like playing with is not only can you change the wallpapers uh, and things like that, like you can with a normal Android phone, but you can also tweak various settings. You can tweak the transitions. So you can see a transition now, which I think is called Cube or Cube In, something like that. And then if I tap and hold, I can gain access to uh, making a default screen. So which one's gonna be my home screen? Or I can change the scroll effect now at the moment I'm on cube in, but let's change it to accordion and then let's go back out. And now when I sweep from screen to screen, you can see the accordion effect. Something very small, but I just love the fact that they've included this. Let's just try one more. Let's try stack. So with stack, as we go from screen to screen, it's as though it's moving one stack in front of the other. And then let's just try one more because I just, I just love these scroll effects. Very, very simple, and only one part of the many customizations you can make. Let's try zoom out for this last one. So we go again, zoom out. Yeah, not a fantastic effect, that one. But let's just go back to my favorite one, which is definitely, oh, let's try one more. Let's try rotate down. So let's just try that one. Ah, right, so that's like a, on a slight sort of curve. So as you move from screen to screen, it's almost as though it's on a circle. That's nice, but my favorite, let's go back to effects one last time, is definitely cubing. I like this transition. It makes it look as though there's a cube effect as you're changing from screen to screen. So in use, this has been fantastic. I've loved using Instagram on it. If I just go into my profile, some of the photos I've taken, these two here, so this one here of my Invicta watch was actually taken with the OnePlus One, and you can see some of the detail. And this was in a, a reasonably lit room, not a very highly lit room, it didn't have any studio lights, and it was just natural light coming into the room. And then the other one I uploaded, which was taken with the OnePlus One, was this uh, picture of my Olympus 45 millimeter lens. And again, the amount of detail it captures is really good. So the camera does do a good job, does a very good job indeed. So let me just uh, swipe down on my notifications, and we will stop the recording and I can then edit this into this video so that you've seen it on the screen. Very, very cool, nice little feature. So I should also just let you know that this phone is obviously very large and it's quite heavy. 
a little bit sort of top heavy and cumbersome when you're holding it in your hand. It is quite difficult to use one handed. I mean, I can't reach either side of the screen. Let me just show you that again. I can't reach right over here or right to the top. So it's definitely a sort of two handed device. You're going to end up holding it in two hands to type and, and access all of the features. But I love the screen, really nice viewing angles. And I also like the quality of the actual device. The build quality is nice. It's framed with this nice sort of metal edge. I've got it in a case at the moment, but the sandstone back has got a nice texture to it as well. And overall, I think it's a very, very good choice. So I do have one issue, and that is with the way this particular smartphone has been marketed. I think it was really silly the way the company handled this. When it was initially launched, you were invited to send in a video of you smashing up your existing smartphone. Now that I think is very irresponsible because if you sent in the video, you weren't guaranteed one of these, you were just within a chance of being offered one of these. So very, very strange sort of social media competition. And then even after that, you still can't actually buy one of these. You can't go onto the OnePlus One website and make your purchase. You have to either be invited by the company or invited by a friend and then when you've got that invitation, you can spend your money and purchase one. I think that's just a very strange way of doing it. And if they'd have made this sort of uh, readily available, they would have sold a lot because you are getting a lot of smartphone for your money. I think including delivery to the UK, this 64 gigabyte model is 278 pounds, 99 pence. So 279 pounds. I think that is a bargain for what you're getting. Yes. There could be things that are better. It could have a slightly better camera and autofocus system. It could work better in low light. It could not get so hot, but there is a lot to like. And I like it a lot. So, you know, if you're in the market for a Google Android smartphone and you don't want to spend a lot of money, you're going to get something really good quality here. Now, before I close out this video, I will just say about the invitations. I don't have any invitations to share. I'm really sorry. I had three invitations which I shared on social media and on YouTube. So I don't have any more at the moment. If I do get more, then I will announce that on my Twitter account. So make sure you're following me at Geekanoids on Twitter. So that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. This has been my review of the OnePlus One smartphone. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see another video of mine, please do click the annotation on the top of your screen now. And also, you can click the annotation on the bottom of your screen and subscribe to the Geekanoids channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.